In 80 days, adventurer and award-winning filmmaker Paul G. Roberts retraces the global footsteps of Phileas Fogg, hero of Jules Verne's most famous work. Now, few cities in the world are celebrated as La Serenissima, or Venice. And it isn't difficult to understand why. With its dreamy canals, old churches, romantic alleys, accentuated by delightful restaurants and a magnificent selection of palaces and museums, the best attractions of Venice are a microcosm of everything that makes the place so special, touching on the centuries of history that shimmer around every corner. The famous city was once the romping ground of the fabled Casanova. The apple, it's very distracting. All right, I'll fight him. I can be Lupo Salvatore. Bastard! And has inspired romantic declarations of excitement for centuries. I should have guessed that first time I saw you. In that citadel of male complacency. When you were as brave in debate as you were later in duel. Sure, it gets insanely busy during summer, and I would recommend that you avoid it like the plague in the months of July and August. But you really can't fault the masses of visitors for their judgment, as Venice is a dream come to life. The most beautiful city on a planet full of them. The first major attraction, um, and one that you, you can't help but you will not be able to miss, is the Grand Canal. And during the high season, the Vaporetto water buses that troll up and down the Grand Canal, they can be oppressively crowded, like New York subways, especially during the morning and evening commutes. And I say from first-hand experience, watch out for pickpockets. Avoid the chaos by travelling the Grand Canal at night time, where it's a beautiful experience as the regal palaces are all lit up, making the ceiling frescoes and grand chandeliers all visible. Another way to bypass the throngs of tourists on the Grand Canal is to hire a water taxi. Some boats even serve onboard champagne. And this indulgence is obviously pricier than public transport, but it's an excellent idea if you're traveling um, with a group or want to indulge some waterborne tra transport. And it's, it's obviously 
a lot cheaper than the gondoliers. We can't really go very fast. And water taxis are also easier to navigate down smaller scenic canals. Plus it's only your group on board so you can stop for photos whenever you want to and as often as you like. Every two years, Venice plays host to the Olympics of the art world, where artists, curators and buyers and critics decamp from across the globe and descend on the Italian city. It's called the Venice Biennale, and it's the perfect opportunity to see the best contemporary art, including getting to know what's going on in different countries. However, if you can't make it in time for the art festival, the foundation behind it also organises several other cultural festivals, including music and film, like the Venice Film Festival. The St. Mark's Basilica is by far the most epic and grand church in all of Venice. It's a Roman Catholic cathedral set smack bang in the heart of Venice in St. Marco's Square. Its architecture is impressive and the marble staircase is filled with incredible detail. And inside, the opulent Renaissance style church has gold mosaics and stunning marble statues that are trademarks of the Venetian history. And notice the horses of St. Mark that crown the main entranceway. They were stolen by Napoleon but were returned in 1815. the famous Piazza San Marco. Set in the heart of the San Marco neighborhood, this bustling area is always packed with tourists and the cafes that you know line the square will charge you forty dollars for a coffee <laughs> so visit early in the morning or late evening to avoid the crowds and uh, i'd suggest getting your coffee somewhere else And around the area, it's a place to peruse the small streets where you can poke through the shops, grab an espresso for less than $40, and maybe even watch a jazz band on a restaurant patio. It's a perfect pit stop when planning to hit the Doge's Palace and St Mark's Basilica on the same day.
Galleria dell'Accademia. Whether you're into art or not, no trip to Venice is complete without a visit to the sprawling art museum, which features over 500 artworks from Gothic to the Rococo eras. And the paintings here are laid out chronologically in 24 rooms. So expect to be taken through the entire illustrious history of Venice from the eyes of the city's artists. Don't miss Carpaccio's St. Ursula sequel. and Veronese's feast in the house of Levi. And the museum is also just a short walk from the Peggy Guggenheim collection.
Which brings me to the Peggy Guggenheim collection. In 1948, the famed art collector bought a palazzo facing the Grand Canal and moved in with a fleet of Lhasa Apso dogs. Today, visitors can see her elaborate modern art collection, which features artworks by Man Ray, Barnett Newman and Frank Stella, alongside the vine-covered terrace and cafe. Guggenheim herself is buried in the garden with her six dogs, each of which has their own gravestone. the Palazzo di Cali. This Gothic building built in the 1700s is an intimidating courthouse with chequered floors. It was once the centre of the city's administration. And though it's more than just a legal hub, there are dozens of classical artworks here, including paintings by Tintoretto, Bellini, Carpaccio, and the space is enormous, so one can easily spend a whole day perusing its elegant hallways. And this is the only way to walk over the famous Bridge of Sighs, which transported doomed prisoners from court to prison.
Campanile di San Marco. With its pointed roof and brick structure, the 10th century Campanile is so tall that it was once the main mark for boat captains to find their way home. It was rebuilt after crumbling in the 1500s and now even has an elevator to take visitors to the top. This bell tower is the most popular in all of Venice. So it's better to visit early in the day, though it can be dreamy at sunset too, and offers a superb view of the city. And if the weather is clear, you can see the Alps in the distance. The Teatro di Venice. This prestigious concert venue with its red velvet seats and golden walls is an absolute must see. And if you're not going to catch the latest Beethoven, This 19th century opera house is one of the most astounding, renowned landmarks of Italian opera. It was built in 1837 and it boasts a gold gilded ceiling and sculptures of mermaids lining the walls. And throughout there are yellow tinted lamps which cast a kind of sepia tone on everything and you can check out their website for the start times of the shows. The Prada Foundation.
Now it's just a short walk from the Rialto Bridge. The Italian fashion brand under the direction of Muccia Prada has its own art collection housed in an 18th century palace, the Palazzo Corna della Regina. The frescoes were commissioned by Caterina Conaro, a descendant of the Queen of Cyprus. And inside you'll find protective gargoyles tucked into the architectural details. Expect to roam through large-scale group shows themed around travel, fashion, architecture, some of which are presented in conjunction with the Venice Biennale. Esoteric and avant-garde, the Prada Foundation is an art museum and cultural think tank in a grand palazzo, in a stately 18th century palace overlooking the Grand Canal. Fondazione Prada aims to examine, per its mission statement, intentions and relevance through an evolution of projects involving visual art, cinema, music, science and philosophy. For lovers of contemporary art, this seasonal venue promises daring and inventive exhibits, plus pieces from Muccia Prada's extensive own private art collection. And then there is the Murano Glass Museum. You should make time to visit to Murano and marvel at the traditional glassmaking artistry that the island is famous for. The beautiful light-altering products are still made at the Fornasa Ferrar Morgano Glass Factory, where visitors are invited to peek inside an open studio. But you can also discover more about the history and the artisanal craft at the Murano Glass Museum, Museo del Vetro. And we question anyone who can come to this place and leave without a head full of dreamy ideas of rainbow chandeliers and miniature glass fruit. And you can also pick up some souvenirs.
And then there's the Rialto Bridge. How could I not cover the Rialto Bridge? The Pont di Rialto. There are over 400 Venetian bridges spanning the entire archipelago, yet none are as famous as the Pont di Rialto. Memorably captured in all its stunning glory by Canaletto and his famous paintings of the city, the iconic bridge is an inspiration for several other bridges in Great Britain, including the Pulteney Bridge in Bath. And I love some late in the day browsing of the bridge's boutiques for local jewellery and other treasures, especially when you can capture the perfect sunset picture on the way out. <laughs> 